just a few minutes, we'll be singing the song of invitation. Pretty neat how Jeff came up with the numbers six, seven, eight, and nine. And they worked out pretty good. Didn't have to print off as many pages. We are glad you're here today. We're blessed to have uh, each and every one of you that have made your presence here. But I'm especially thankful and happy uh, that some cousins are back here today again. Rosalind Stout's sister Rosie is here, and brother-in-law Ray Jones, uh, Rosie Killian, and I uh, hope that's close. <laughs> they are Rosie and Rosalind, and then the late Judy, Ray's wife, uh, all the daughters of uh, Uncle Herman, my Uncle Herman, and Aunt Olave. So, Daddy, oldest brother was Herman, highly esteemed and loved, and a gospel preacher as well. So it's really exciting to have Rosie here and Ray and all of you. Hope you can be back with us anytime you possibly can. Amen. Amen. This is, uh, I guess, the one year anniversary of the tornadoes this week. And uh, I remember we always go to Freed Harbor Lectures the first week in February. And last year, as we were going, somebody on the van mentioned there's some kind of a virus coming out of China that could be pretty bad. But that was, that was about all that was said, first week in February last year. And of course, the immediately, the epidemic and uh, costing many lives. So uh, we, hopefully these vaccines will help. Sue and I both have both of ours now and didn't make us sick, and we're praying that we can uh, avoid, well, along with you, this terrible virus. And we do a lot of praying about it, and a lot to be thankful for, for sure. And we're thankful in the tornadoes that our, the Wileys' home was damaged, but they were safe from that tornado, as well as uh, other families that were in the vicinity. Well, the lesson this morning is titled, The Most Repeated Commandment from God. The Most Repeated Commandment. Repetition is uh, one of the laws of learning. Remember in grade school, we had to learn the multiplication table. Six times eight, 48. Six times six, 36. And they had to keep going over those and over those and over those. And I could do pretty good as long as we stayed uh, 10 and under, but when it got a little bit above that, I had some trouble, but it was one of the laws of learning is repetition. Ball teams practice, I remember in football, we run the same plays over and over and over every day. So you're hoping that uh, it would become an automatic, uh, when the number was announced by the quarterback, you would know immediately where to go and what to do. Uh, repetition was very much a part of sports as well as important dates that we need to remember. And of course, um, we all remember, and I'm sure that are married, how that uh, the preacher said, now repeat after me. I, John, take thee, Jane, to be my wedded companion. I, John, take thee, Jane, to be my wedded companion. And it was repetition to solidify the vows that you have, were taking. Um, in other words, uh, repeat after me, was one of the ways of giving emphasis to something very, very important, our wedding vows. Well, the commandments of God are very, very important, for sure. They come to us from the Bible. This is how God communicates His will for us. The Holy Word of God, the Holy Scriptures. Jesus said, by these we're going to be judged someday. John 12 48, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words has one that judgeth him, the same that has been spoken to him shall judge him on that day. So the scriptures, the word of God, this represents the commandments from God. And God has a right to give commandments because he is the creator of us all. He is the omnipotent, almighty God and the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And for our happiness, for our well-being, for our hope we need teaching and instruction in regard to commandments this lesson today is just a little bit different uh, i saw the basic idea for it and i've added some things in one of the church bulletins i get 
But the thought was, what is the most repeated commandment in the Bible? What is the most repeated? Repetition is one of the laws of learning. The Bible is where we get the Word of God, so it's important. What do you think is the most repeated commandment in the Holy Scriptures? Well, I've already been told this morning, my buddy Ron back there in North said, I've been thinking about that sermon. I heard you tell on the Caroline what it's going to be. He said, I think it's love. Well, is love the most repeated commandment in the Bible? It's important. In Matthew 22, when Jesus was asked, what is the first and the great commandment? He said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first and the great commandment. So, and then, of course, you got 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, where Jesus, Paul said, And now by the faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. So Ron's on the right track that if we're talking about number one, yeah, that's love. If you're talking about uh, the importance of it, and first, that's love. But that's not what we're thinking about this morning. We're thinking about what is the most repeated commandment in the Bible. And it's not love. Huh. Well, maybe it's pride. One of those kind of uh, difficulties that we see <laughs> that sometimes dominates our thinking. And some folks have a real struggle with pride. You know, in Proverbs 16, verses 18 and 19... The wisdom of Solomon said, Pride goeth before destruction. A haughty spirit goes before a fall. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Paul told for the qualifications of elders in 1 Timothy 3 and 6 that they were not to be a novice, a new convert, lest they be lifted up with pride and fall into the condemnation of the devil. So pride, 1 John 2 and 16, Paul, John spoke of the love of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So pride is a great challenge for some folks to keep their thinking right, but it's not the most repeated commandment in the Bible. Well, it's got to be the other reverse of pride that we be humble, that we have a kind and loving attitude of humbleness. That would be the opposite of pride. Maybe those are the most commandments are about, well, there are several about humility. Uh, we especially in Matthew 18 read in verse 1, at the same time the disciples came to Jesus saying, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he said, I say unto you, except you be converted, and become as little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom. So it's important. It's the right attitude. Do you have a humble attitude? But it's not the most often repeated commandment in the Bible. It's a necessity, but it's not the most. Well, I, I say you're getting around to sin. Sin is the most often commandments in the scriptures that we avoid sin. Like the little boy said about the preacher, he was against it. Well, we need to be against it, and we need to believe that the Bible teaches against it. In Matthew 5, 6, and 7, Jesus said, You've heard it said of old time, Thou shalt not, but I say unto you. That's against sin and wrongdoing. In the 23rd chapter of Matthew, in regard to the hypocr hypocrisy of the Pharisees, they were whitewashed tombstones, but inside full of evil. The other Bible has a lot to say about such. And um, in regard to sins, Paul listed several of those in Galatians chapter 5. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these? Adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, strife, emulations, heresies, and such like. I say to you that they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So that's a lot of scripture, but it's not the number one subject that the Bible speaks against. It's not sin. It's not being humble. It's not pride. It's not love. Well, maybe it's believing. Belief. Well, belief's important. 
In John 8 and 24, Jesus said, If you believe not that I am He, you shall die in your sins. And in Acts 8, 36 and 37, the eunuch said, Here's water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? Philip said, If thou believest, thou mayest. And he said, I believe Jesus Christ, Son of God. It's important, it's essential to go to heaven that we believe, but no, that's not the answer. Well, it's repentance. That's what it is, repentance. Repentance is important. Luke 13 and 5, except you repent, you shall perish. Uh, Luke 24, 46 and 47, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. It's important. Acts 2 and 38, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. It's important, but it's no, it's not the number one subject referred to throughout the scriptures. No, it's not. Well, it's baptism. You, you preachers like to talk about baptism. Well, it's not important. Matthew 28 and 19, the Great Commission said to go into all nations and teach and baptize. It is important. Mark 16 and 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Or what about um, in John 3, you must be born again of the water and the spirit. And another reference is Acts 22 and 16. And now why tarriest thou arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. We have 10 major conversion examples in the book of Acts of people obeying the gospel, being baptized. So yes, there's a lot in the Bible about baptism, but it's not the most repeated commandment. I give up. What is it? If it's not any of these that we just listed and looked at, what is the most repeated commandment from God in His Holy Word? Fear not. <laughs> Pretty simple, isn't it? Fear not. Now there's some other forms by which this is said. Some of the verses speak of do not be afraid. It means the same thing. Why are you afraid? It means the same thing. Be strong and be of good courage. That means the same thing as fear not. Mr. Lloyd Ogilvy studied this subject and in his writings suggested 366 times in the Bible God said fear not or some form of that wording. That's more than one a day. 365 days in a year. 366. So we got one for a leap year. But... The point is, that's the most referred to subject, repeated command from giver to giver, from cover to cover in the Bible, is that we fear not. Fear not. In Luke 12, we had have this reading in verse 27. Jesus said, Consider the lilies of the field, they, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. I say that Solomon was not arrayed like one of these. If God so clothe the grass of the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe ye, O ye, O little faith? The little faith we identify with this most repeated commandment to fear not. The question becomes, in this sermon, if fear not is the number one repeated commandment from Genesis to Revelation, 366 times, Brother Ogilvy said, why? What's the significance of it? I see when it says to be baptized, okay, I need to be baptized. I see when it says I must believe, okay, I must believe, I understand that. I understand when he says that they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's pretty obvious. But what is the significance? What is the, uh, the purpose? If this is the number one repeated commandment, God's given it great emphasis. Now listen. Now hear this. Like a, someone trying to talk to a little child. Do you understand what I'm saying? Repeat after me. I want you to make sure you know exactly what I'm saying to you. Repeat after me. 
God's saying, repeat after me. Listen to me. What I'm telling you. But why? Why? Why does he repeat this commandment? Fear not. Fear not. Well, it is the number one reason that we sin. It is the number one reason that we sin. Fear. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't know if I stay with you here or not on this preacher. Well, let me give you some examples. Is gossiping a sin? Oh, yeah, it's a sin. People gossip and they tell tales and they say things that are not true about other people and run them down and they're not loving and compassionate. Is gossip a sin? Yes. Well, why do we sin? Why do we gossip? Well, people gossip because the fear of rejection. You tell me something good and juicy and I want to inquire and I want to know, you know. I want to hear about that. And so I listen. I'm as guilty as the gossiper because I give them an audience. Why do I do that? I don't like myself when I do that. I'm not proud of myself. Well, I don't want to be rejected. I don't want them to say, well, are you listening to anything I'm saying? Don't you think this is important that they're doing this and doing that and they've said this or that? We're afraid of being rejected. And so we go along with the gossip and we tell others because we don't want to be rejected. Fear. Worry. Worry is wrong. Christians shouldn't worry. Concern, yes. We have a right to be concerned. But old worry gets me. It's got me for many years. I told my doctor, I said, I'm so afraid the other shoe's going to fall. He said, I know what you mean. If you've gone through struggles within your home and family, you know how worry is. And worry can cause you to sin because we are thinking in the wrong direction and not with faith. We waste so much time. It hit me one day this past week. I'd been praying about something and by the blessing of God it was taken care of. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry I didn't thank you sooner for answering that prayer because you did, and I'm thankful. And then it hit me how much time I've wasted in my life being afraid. How much time I've wasted in my life worrying about things that the good Lord takes care of in His own way and will. And He knows what's best. And I just need to turn the steering wheel over to Him. Let him fly this plane. Not worry about the other shoe falling. If it does fall, he'll be there to help pick me up and to get me through that too. Now, God's not saying everything's good and easy and that there will not come stress and hard times, but he's saying, I'll be with you, and he always has been. I'll help you, and I've got something prepared for you that's better than anything here in this life. Amen. Amen, Eric. Unbelievable stress comes about out of worry. Some of the sins that fear also causes following the crowd to do evil instead of facing with the truth the situations. Little evangelism taking place is because of fear of failure. How many times through the years have people said to me, I, I just don't know the Bible enough to try to talk to somebody else. They, they might ask me a question and I don't know the answer to it. And I'd be so embarrassed. I understand. Been there and done that. Uh, in some very uh, uh, difficult situations with some Jehovah's Witnesses that I was studying with. Uh, they pinned my ears to the wall, a young preacher who thought he knew everything, and uh, talked about uh, the Trinity. And one of them said, Now, now Mr. Fox, uh, where is that trinity in the Bible? Well, it's in the Bible. It's uh, I don't believe it's in the Bible. I got to look and all the word trinity is not in the Bible. They picked me to the wall. So yeah, we've all been in some of those situations that were embarrassing, that we could not recall. What is that scripture? I know it's on baptism. I just can't think what it is. 
But what we do out of that fear, we don't do anything. We quit our evangelism. We quit talking to people. We quit trying to set up studies with others that they could learn and know the truth. So, fear. Unwholesome companions. The fear is that we are going to be facing a situation that whereby we might disappoint some of our friends and the friendship with our friends is more important than the Lord. That's wrong. Denial of Jesus. When Peter was sitting there at the fire, the Lord had been arrested, was in Caiaphas' palace, and he was just sitting there around the fire on a cold night, and one of the maidens there said, um, I believe you're one of his men, one of the apostles. And no, no, ma'am, not, not me. No, no. Said there a little longer, and another said, I'm sure your speech betrays you. you. You sound like a Galilean to me. No, no, no. And the third time, he cursed and he swore, I do not know the man. Now, it was fear. Fear not. He was so afraid when he saw what they were doing to Jesus that even though before earlier he pulled out a sword to defend the Lord, now the Lord in the seat of judgment and none of the other apostles are with him. Maybe John might have been falling afar off. But uh, he's afraid. He doesn't want to go through what Jesus is going through. And he knows he's probably going to be put to death. And so he was fearful. Denial of Jesus. Do you, we deny Jesus around the water fountain at work? Do we deny Jesus when we go out to eat lunch with someone? Do we deny our Lord by business dealings, family dealings, neighborhood dealings in our lives? Usually it's motivated by fear. Fear. How are we going to overcome this number one repeated commandment to fear not? Well, Solomon said in the last writing of Ecclesiastes, to fear God and keep His commandments, this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or evil. Jesus wants us to focus on Him and not be afraid. That great passage that Dee read for us from Mark chapter 4, when the Lord's resting and asleep, and they wake him up in the storm out of the sea. Carest thou not that we perish? Carest thou not that we perish? We're getting ready to die. Wake up. He rebuked them for their little faith. We see that Peter was in the group. And he asked the Lord if he would bid him to come to him on the water. He said, come. He stepped out of the boat. Now we've got a terrible storm going on. The winds and the waves are howling and the water's leaping up on Peter. But he took a step and he walked on the water until he looked down at the waves and the water and he began to sink. If we're going to handle the fears of this life, we need to keep our focus on Jesus. Amen. We need to keep our focus on the Lord. Watch Him. Follow Him. And then we'll have the wisdom and the faith and the courage to conquer. Faith. Hear, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So our faith is increased. We thought about the most often repeated commandment in the Scriptures. And it is fear not. And I hope today that you would be have the courage. If you've never obeyed the gospel, and it does take courage. I've been down these aisles been down aisles, not these aisles, but I know what it's like to want to get your heart right with God. And so if you've never obeyed the gospel, I pray you have the courage to step out. I'll meet you. I'll meet you. If you'll take the first step, I'll be right there and ready to receive the second one. Maybe you are a Christian already. You've gone back to the world. I pray you have the courage to do the right thing. Confess our sins one to another. Pray one for another that we might be healed. If we can assist you, fear not is the number one repeated commandment through the Scriptures. Are we willing to put our faith and our courage to work this morning? Fear not, my friend. 
Always standing, always standing.